I'm quite intrigued to break down this topic actually in terms of charity shops and their profitability. I think that hopefully by the end of this video I would have given you my honest take where I stand on it based on what I've learned and what I would probably say going forward. I'm sure you can also see I'm wearing a different outfit to what I was a minute ago. Yesterday the mic died and I had a live so I couldn't finish it. So you're actually joining me Monday afternoon. I've just been to the handpick and I'm sorting out some items from the next website drop. So you get a little sneak peek of that. Uh, if this is up before they'll be online, maybe. But anyway, um, I wanted to talk today about charity shops and are they profitable? When I mean, are they profitable, I'm coming obviously from the perspective of somebody who buys to resell from charity shops. Now, when I started using them back in like 2011, I'd say the landscape of how charity shops worked were a lot different. Obviously, they are non, or they're typically non-profit organizations. I'm not really gonna get into the uh, politics of charity shops too much because, um, I think there's a lot to actually speak on that in different videos. However, they are designed as non-profits. People donate clothes, people donate books, they donate toys, whatever, you name it. And then the charity shop puts a tag on it, gives it a price and a value and, and they distribute it. For those American viewers, it may be, I don't know. Uh, it's the same as what thrift stores are, but on a completely smaller scale and yeah, on basically on a sm much smaller scale. Um, so, when I used to use charity shops, the whole ecosystem of things was a lot, lot different. So I used to go to the, um, it was back when I couldn't even drive. I, did, I only learned to drive when I was 25. So I used to get a few buses a day when I was like studying at university, get a few buses in between and go, go to all these different charity shop spots. And I think one thing without sort of being too like political about things, but the socio-economic background of an, an area can determine the quality of a charity shop. So I used to go to what I would say is rough areas within my local like Leicester area and, and go to the charity shops there because they were just always really good. You could just always find really good stuff. And, and back then, and I can say back then because it has been like 10 to 12 years and charity shops have evolved so much, but back then, what you bought from charity shops wasn't considered something that would be profitable. People were like, you're just giving away items of clothing, you're giving away books, and then it's gonna be rehomed. People aren't probably, weren't thinking at that time, you could come here and buy stuff to resell. Obviously now the economy of things has absolutely skyrocketed, but I'll get onto that in a moment. Um, so I used, to, I used to use charity shops all the time. I used to have a lot of success from what I got. I'd probably buy things like, back in the day, I used to find a lot of Burberry for like two to three pound. Used to buy lots of Nike sweatshirts for two to three pound. Uh, Ralph Lauren shirts, you name it. It wasn't, it, I never bought an item above five pounds. So, fast forwarding it to, to kind of like where we are now, and the ecosystem of charity shops has changed so much so, due to the fact that not only has the general public and everybody else really clicked onto the value in buying and selling, but the charity shops themselves are aware of the value in the stuff that they have that is received uh, and given as donations. Now, it really depends on where your ethical stance on things are, depending on how you might take this, but a lot of people at different points even questioned whether it's ethical to buy from a charity shop when you're buying it to sell it for more. People would say like, do you think that's really like ethical? And my logic and my process has always been, you imagine going into 10 different charity shops every single month and spending like three, 400 pounds, you could have somebody who donates 20 pounds a month or 15 pound a month to a charity, but you're essentially giving little bits of money to so many different charities. That's how I always looked at it on the sort of ethical sense. I obviously, people might say, yeah, you've just made, you've just shaped that so it suits you. Whether I have or whether I haven't, the main thing is, is that you're donating to charity um, and it's better than not. Heaven forbid in this UK economy that we're trying to make side money, but also 
um, there's something that you lot should be aware of in terms of side hustles that I'm going to get onto in another video. I would say that that one you really need to watch if you are a reseller because that one's going to be definitely useful for you. So let's go to the point of what I'm trying to get to, which is are charity shops in this day and age still profitable? Again, it's such a big, broad question and it comes with such, such a difficult like, ability to actually answer it simply. I think it's relative to what you're looking for. If you are somebody that's trying to buy Burberry, Ralph Lauren, Moncler, like the, you know, the, the Italian branded um, designer stuff from charity shops, then you should expect now to probably be paying a lot more than you ever did. Not to say that you won't ever find it, but you kind of have to be aware that these charity shops are aware of what they're selling. And as a result, most of them have their own websites. Most of them are distributed on different platforms. Um, and the argument people could say is, oh my God, you know, you could say charity shops are sort of taking things and, and making a profit. But as long as it goes, to our knowledge, mostly to the charity, I think that all in all, like, as long as it's, as long as it's for the right cause and it's for the right reason, then that's all that matters. There's obviously, charity shops have had a big investment into the research around things. Like places like Oxfam, British Heart Foundation, they've all made very big attempts to have an online presence with vintage clothing and stuff like that. And you can kind of look at it in two ways, can't you? You can kind of think that charity shops have now become an obsolete place to actually generate money from and buy stuff from. Or you can think that this is great, that charity shops are not only support in secondhand sustainable fashion but they're actually generating more money for the charities and that's kind of like how I try and see things. I also want to look at this with a bit more optimum so people might go I used to go to charity shops and now every time I find like a Nike sweatshirt it's a rubbish version of it or I'll find a pair of like these Levi's 511s and you know you might be paying 15 pounds for these in a charity shop. No word of a lie because the charity shop knows how much the new price is that it can charge it for, which is at 85, so it probably thinks 15 pounds still reasonable. It's only that people have a memory of charity shops where you could buy things for one to two pound that they find it difficult to accept now. But the whole economy of things has changed massively. So when I used to buy, you know, inflation, let's just say, when I used to buy things for two pound, like a Nike sweatshirt, I would sell it for two pound. So it was respective, I was selling it as an inflated price, respective of that. You can look at it and go, wow, you bought something for two quid and sold it for 20 quid. Let's not get into the fact of actually having a camera, photographing myself, having to hose, home it, having to allocate tax and stuff. Like, that's just all a given. Like, business needs to make a profit in order to generate. You know, you know what I mean? I'm going to get into the rule of, of the many, many other rules. Uh, like I say, one video a day, so we can only do it in baby steps. But now, if you go to a charity shop, or even if, so like I say, so a Nike sweatshirt that I bought for two quid, sold for 20 pound. Now that same Nike sweatshirt, well, you'd probably buy it for 15 to 20 pound, but they're probably selling it for 60 to 70 pound. No word of a lie. At some point down the line, I will show you like proof of like some of my first sales in 2011 and the prices that I was selling it for. And some of the items, it was all charity shop found at the beginning, all charity shop and all car boots and eBay, which is the normal come up stage. So. Let me go back and answer this question that's in the title, and it's, are charity shops profitable for resellers? The answer is yes. They most definitely are profitable, but the profitability or the specification on the profitability is relative to what you are looking for. Firstly, let me just distract you a sec. CP company jacket coming um, this week. First looks, all these little goggles. I have no idea why people love CP Company so much um, at this point anyway, but you know what? Let's go with it. They are still super profitable places, but what you have to do is the same thing I had to do when I realized that loads of people started to sell the exact same thing. Look, I was sitting on a gold mine of an idea that I thought secondhand selling is mental. This is wicked. I'm like making a business. I'm really doing well off it. And then like everybody was aware of it a lot more easily and they realized how accessible it was. And I had to then climatize and evolve with 
a new approach to how I wanted to sell, which is why now I'm a lot more excited about the idea of being a personal brand, being more of like a teacher whilst still selling it because I find that I could just be a teacher and not selling it, but then also the beauty with doing, like practicing what you preach is that I actually understand the market in this current live moment rather than being like, yeah, I used to sell five years ago and this is what I remember. No, I still sell every day to this point and I still work on many third party apps on my own apps and I'm very much in the ecosystem of the stock market that is secondhand because I have a passion for it. But what I will say is that what I've had to do with climatizing is I've had to climatize with what I find. Look, this, five, 10 years ago, probably even now, someone might have this for 2 99 in an Oxfam, but you might not buy it, but I will. And the reason why I'll get things like this is because the need for unbranded, in my eyes, is where there's a big pocket of no interest. So to go to the point that I keep kind of like frisbeeing myself away from, if you want to still use charity shops to make genuine profit, you need to start doing a few of these things. You need to look at it is look at what brands you genuinely want to sell, what type of category and lines do you want to sell, and are those already super oversaturated? So if you're somebody that's like, I really just want to find old skate t-shirts and surfwear and stuff like that, that's fantastic, but I will tell you right now that the reason why the price is high on those items is because there is a lot of sort of after nature with them. You know, Quicksilver, Animal, Etnies, these sort of skate and surf brands are starting to have a big increase and it won't be long until the charity shops start clicking on. They're like an outdated seaside town. They catch up eventually um, and when they do, obviously it's too late, but you might have them pockets. But anyway, I would say find out what it is that you want to sell and if you're already selling that thing you want to sell, how can you attach something extra to that that in order to give yourself an advantage. What is in the charity shop that is one pound? Is it something that you can actually buy and start flipping from that? Because that would be my logic. I would go for what's the, common denom what's the lowest common denominator? What's the cheapest item that I can look at? Maybe your local charity shop just has loads of like weird jewelry that you could start selling on eBay. Take it on a nice white background, start uploading it. Maybe they do like, I know one near me does like, it will have like five of these like weird rings for like 50p. Five rings for 50p is 10p a ring. Sell each one for a pound. That's 90p profit per one. I didn't mean to dumb it down with like quick maths, but what I'm saying is that charity shops are profitable as long as you're willing to evolve with what you're actually looking for. If you're very set on just looking for Stussy, looking for Nike, looking for set types of vintage and old school stuff, then I'm sorry, but you're going to just have to stay salty at the times when there's about 100,000 people. There's so many more people than you realise in your local area of going to charity shops doing the same thing. And it doesn't mean to not stay competitive, but one day I'll break down why charity shops are very difficult if you're looking for stuff that's super sought after because they're quite clued up now. So that's been my take on it. If, you, if you're still doing it, also just remember, if you're buying from charity shops and you're managing to make profit, you're also donating to lots of reputable causes constantly. So not only are you being circular, but you're also being a good human being in my eyes. Um, and that's what matters, being a good human being in my eyes. Anyway, big love, guys. I am going to get ready to shoot some clothing. And yeah, see you on the next one.